Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over my new and improved PSA AK-74. So after my 10,000 round review video, I decided to post some pictures to the internet of the insides of this thing because I'm not a gunsmith, especially not an AK gunsmith. I know how to put on uh, furniture and autistically hammer on this thing, but I'm not really sure what a good AK should look like after 10,000 rounds. So after posting the pictures of the internals on Instagram, I got some kind of mixed reactions of you know how it looked. So then I hit up PSA and I was like, hey, would you be willing to refurbish my 74 with the Gen 2 spec parts? Because the Gen 2 versions of these guns shouldn't show that excessive wear. The gun ran fine uh, before sending it to them. I didn't have any issues, but the wear on some of the lugs on here were pretty bad. So when I got this gun back, they essentially replaced everything. Uh, the barrel, the receiver, pretty much everything that was painted on the gun prior just came back black because they replaced all the parts and all that was left that was painted were some of the external, like the furniture that I had on the gun before, like the dust cover, the hand guard. They left the triangle stock that I had on there. It didn't come back looking like this, obviously, with this Midwest Industries Alpha furniture, which we're gonna go into here shortly. But you know, when I got it back, I. I wanted to change the look of the gun because I wanted it to be like its new, you know, life. So, wanted to change everything about it, and I decided to go with this Midwest Industries uh, Alpha furniture. They sent me their entire kit, so I did not pay for this. They did send it to me at my request because I was really interested in this stuff because you know it's. Zeneco-ish, you know, it's not a direct clone of Zeneco stuff, but it's very much like it and it's American made. So, you know, I wanted to test this stuff out, see if it was good or not, because Zeneco does have um, an air of quality to it. And I was looking to see if an American company can get close to what Zeneco offers. I don't have that many rounds on this AK yet. I have a couple hundred on it, uh, just through kind of messing around with it last week. But this drill, that we're about to run here is gonna be the first time that I really kind of put this rifle through its paces. But we'll go over everything that is going on with this setup here, you know, what I think about it, what it was like installing this stuff and kind of everything going on with this particular build. But before we get into it, a word from our sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Battle Cat, which is an Second Amendment themed apparel company, which has some actually some pretty cool designs that aren't just like generic knockoffs of you know famous mountaintops, which I think is super overdone in this industry. But if you're looking for some Second Amendment themed apparel that isn't super cringe, Battlecat Company might be uh, the people just for you. So go check them out. I got a link in the description and big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. This video is also sponsored by Core Belts. Excellent belts, I got a video on them and Americana Pipe Dream, the place you wanna go for all of your surplus needs. I got a link in the description where if you put your information there, you'll get entered into our monthly giveaway where you'll be entered into getting a chance to get a belt as well as a cool care package from Americana Pipe Dream. So, Go check them out. All right, so the drill that we're gonna be running today is gonna be based off of uh, some stuff, some footage I've seen circulating around Instagram or Telegram, depending on which social media network you use. I've been seeing Russian troops, I believe Wagner troops, using old double barrel or single barrel super long shotguns that look like they got them out of uh, Babushka's basement to uh, shoot down drones, which uh, if you remember, I have a video on this concept of you know packing out shotguns or adding shotguns to your arsenal to help combat drones, and it kind of looks like it's being done. Uh, I set up a drill kind of based off of this, uh, this footage and what's going on currently where I got this double barrel shotgun and I have a skeet shooter. So this is going to kind of mimic uh, countering drones somewhat. It's gonna be a lot probably closer than how drones fly, but kind of get the idea. It's just gonna practice using this thing uh, against a flying object. I don't know, it's gonna be fun. This is gonna be a 10 minute drill. Never tested this out. Might be too short time, might be too long a time. We'll see how it goes. On go, I'm gonna say pull. I am going to engage the clay pigeon that flies across over here. I'm gonna have two shots to do it. I am not an experienced uh, skeet shooter, so we'll see how this goes. I haven't done it in a long time. If I hit the clay pigeon, 
I'm good to go to move on. If I miss the clay pigeon, uh, I gotta pay for it. So what's gonna oh. happen, if I miss both shots, I am going to ah. conduct 15 kettlebell swings with this kettlebell that you see here. This is an 80 pound kettlebell. It's gonna smoke me up a little bit as punishment for missing the drone. After I conduct the kettlebell swings, or if I do hit it, I'm just gonna move on to the rifle section. So after I make it to right here, I'm going to engage the steel target from the standing twice. I'm gonna make two hits from the standing. I'm gonna drop down in the kneeling, make two hits. Probably not right here, because there's a bush in my way. Once I make two hits, or four hits complete right here, I'm gonna run down to the middle of the hill to right here, do the same thing. I'm going to make two hits standing, two hits kneeling, once I do that, I'm going to run to the bottom of the hill there to the gravel road. I'm gonna hit the target again twice from standing. Once I make two hits, I'm gonna to transition to pistol. I'm gonna make three hits with my pistol on the steel target. Once I make those three hits, I'm gonna run back up to the, top, the hill, halfway up where I just shot right here. Two hits standing, two hits kneeling. After I make my four hits from the middle of the hill, I'm gonna run back up to the top two hits standing, two hits kneeling, and then that is one round complete. I'm gonna complete that as many times as I can in 10 minutes. I'm um, kind of putting this new setup, um, running it through its paces a little bit, get some pistol work in, as well as uh, some skeet shooting. So, should be fun. Let's test it out. All right, here goes nothing. Oh. Ooh. I'm counting that. I nicked it. Maybe my hold isn't good. I'm not sure if I'm hitting it, 
I'm just not hearing it. That was one record point. Pull. Uh. Damn it. Pretty sure those are it. Yeah. <sighs>
I know I probably I'm over time, but. I'm gonna call that. I know I'm over time at this point. And sometimes it's kind of hard to see because I'm fogging up here and sweating on my iPro or here if I'm hitting. I'm seeing the target move, so I might be grazing it if I'm not hitting, getting a direct hit on it. So sometimes it's hard to see if I get hits, but uh, that was pretty fun. Uh, let's talk about it. So how did that go? Um, that was actually a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, mostly because I was having some issues actually hearing if I was hitting the target down there and my eye pro was starting to fog up and get sweat on it. I was getting visual cues of me hitting it, of it swaying, but I wasn't hearing it. So sometimes I had to you know, overshoot it a little bit, which I guess is good training because you want to keep on shooting until your target is neutralized. But it was a ton of fun. I wish I increased it to about 15 minutes. That way I can get a few more rounds in possibly but it was a ton of fun transitioning from this super old double barrel shotgun. This is like an old Savage Arms Fox Model B, which this thing performed well for <laughs> shooting the skeet, but that was a ton of fun. I haven't shot skeet in a long time. I used to do it a lot as a kid, but it's been a long time and probably why I missed a few shots and had to pay with the kettlebell swings. But overall, what I was really testing out was this new setup here. And you know it performed well. Um, I think my where my hold was was a little off from where I thought it was going to be, uh, but I figured it out throughout the drill and found out where I needed the hold on the target. And also it was I started to get a little smoked running up and down the hill doing the kettlebell swings. Uh, so it was a real challenge. Which you know whenever you're smoked and um, you're out of breath, actually hitting a target with your gun is pretty hard so I recommend if you know you're into this stuff trying out some stress shoots you know make sure it's safe because you'll see actually how hard it is under like combat conditions how accurate you're actually gonna be so going over the part that you guys are all waiting for the Midwest Industries alpha rail uh, so again I got this thing last week I installed it last week and this was actually very easy to install, didn't require a ton of elbow grease, a little bit of hammering with a uh, rubber mallet, which is pretty typical when it comes to installing hand guards, which are pressure fit into the receiver. Just a little rubber mallet, tapped it right in. Didn't have to remove any material on the hand guard to make it fit with this PSA, which was nice to see. And how it installs is you tap in the lower hand guard here, and then this top portion here, clamshells on there, screws in, which you want to lock tight, which I highly recommend doing. And then you got the dust cover here. I can't show it on camera of me installing all this stuff because YouTube would be made big mad, but this screws into the, the lower section and top section of the, the hand guard here. And it hinges just like a you know Texas Weapon Systems dust cover or the Zeneca one does. So far, this dust cover has been holding zero from what I've seen when I zeroed this rifle last week. Time will tell. I don't have a ton of rounds on this thing. I only have a couple hundred on it so far, but so far what from what I've seen, this thing is very solid. I would say it's even probably more solid than Texas Weapon Systems, which is that dust cover holds zero for me as well. Uh, a lot of these dust covers get kind of a bad rap when it comes to holding zero and retaining zero. Uh, this seems incredibly solid and I'm not really worried about it, you know, losing its zero, but again, time will tell. So moving on to the piece that I think is the best part about the whole Alpha kit is the butt stock here. This is clearly based off of the Zenico stock and this thing is incredibly solid. I like how you can adjust the cheek riser on it. You can adjust the butt pad back here. My only complaint about it is that they only offer the Picatinny um, adapter uh, version of it. So this is a Picatinny adapter on the back of my uh, folding trunnion here, which I had left over from my uh, PSA AK-104. And what I would like to see, maybe they're gonna develop one here in the future, is one that directly interfaces with my existing uh, folding rear trunnion. That way I can just tap it in or uh, fit it in there, then tap the, uh, the pin that goes through here. Um, 
it's kind of, uh, just seems a little bit more kosher to me. Um, this thing is totally fine, but you know, hopefully one day they actually have one that directly interfaces with your existing uh, folding trunnion, but time will tell. As far as the other attachment choices that I have on this gun, uh, just running the standard AK-74 muzzle brake, which is totally fine. I don't think you need a crazy muzzle brake on a 74 to keep it uh, from recoiling because the gun hardly recoils at all to begin with. Before that, I had a J-Mac brake on there with a blast forward device, but I don't know, I just kind of like the aesthetic of the classic uh, AK-74 muzzle brake and it works great. Moving back here, just got my Surefire um, Vampire Light. Um, nothing new here with a pressure pad attached to the top of the, uh, the handguard here. And I got it zip tied down just so it keeps this pressure pad in place. Got my Slate Black Industries uh, foregrip. I don't usually run foregrips on AKs. Um, I have it in the past just because you didn't, back in the, pa in the past, I didn't have enough hand room really to put one where it didn't uh, interfere with my magazine. But with this, I can move it for farther forward and it works out great, especially when you're trying to actuate this pressure pad here. I do like the foregrip on there. Some people don't like foregrips, but uh, I like them a lot. Uh, moving back here, got the classic. If you've been following the channel for a long time, uh, you know that I love the Hollow Sun Ames. This is one of my favorite red dots on the market. And I'm about to do a video here because I really can't tell um, <laughs> if this thing is What's better for your money, this or a EOTech? Uh, because this thing and the features that it offers, um, I think are better than the EOTech, but there's also parts about the EOTech that I like more than this. This isn't a holographic sight, this is a red dot. So you're dealing with a little bit of parallax there, but what I love most about this optic, other than its incredible battery life, is how good it is under night vision. This is the optic I usually run on, uh, you know, whenever I go out to Milsom West because Quite honestly, that is when I'm under night vision the most and am doing force on force, you know, engaging other people at night. And this thing is awesome when it comes to passive aiming. Not all red dots, even if they do have night vision settings, are even usable under night vision. I've tested a bunch of different red dots under night vision that have night vision settings where the reticle actually gets dim enough to be used under night vision where it's not going to flare out. Uh, you can't put some of those red dots, you can't even see, you know, what you're aiming at because it's not allowing enough light transmission through the optic or the, um, the lens isn't clear enough. But the Holosun Ames, in my opinion, is one of the best, if not the best optics, you know, for 400 bucks to actually use at night for night fighting. So do a video on that, comparing this to some other optics, including the, um, the EOTech, which is currently on my AK-103, but absolutely love the Ames. This is probably the saltiest Holosun Ames. If you want to zoom in on this thing, let's see how beat up it is. Um, this thing has been through a lot. The only thing I really had to do is I had a, um, an Ames, I believe it's called the core. Yeah, it's the core version of the Ames. Don't get that one. Uh, that one kind of sucks. It looks like an Ames. It's just not an Ames. It doesn't have the flip up uh, caps that you see here, which are great. If you're doing, use this thing for airsoft. Um, <laughs> this is going to protect your lens from getting shot out. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have the, uh, the donut of death. It doesn't have the solar panel on it and it doesn't have night vision settings. So the core version absolutely sucks. Would not recommend getting that one. Would recommend just getting an Aimpoint Pro at that point, but I would recommend getting the actual, you know, Hall Sun Ames. Uh, if you get one of these things, it's going to last you a long time. And what I was getting at before is you can see on the actual screw here, on the back here, <laughs> the core I had paint or I had painted, and I just swapped out the little screw here and the attachment point because I was a big dumb freaking retard ranger and uh, tightened it down a little bit too much, and I stripped the screw, got it off, and I replaced it with the one that was on the core. So um, I guess the one good thing the core is for is uh, having replacement parts for your or replacement mount for your existing aims, but. Overall, absolutely love this optic. Decided to put it on the 74 here and uh, yeah, worked out good. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this setup here. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this Midwest Industries Alpha setup uh, you know, holds up and you know, if it is as good as the Zeneco stuff. 
I'm not saying it is as good, but it's kind of cool to see stuff like this uh, coming out here in the United States or at an affordable price. Uh, unlike some of the Zenico stuff you're seeing, you know, price now due to the current conflict. And I do enjoy seeing like AK innovation, you know, happening here in the United States. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Jean Operator or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com to find some cool shirts and merch, which helps to support the channel. Also guys, if you wanna get involved with the channel a little bit more directly, I got Patreon, got a couple different levels on there. Helps me buy ammo, guns, gear, all that kind of stuff that goes into running a gun channel. And you'll get access to watching videos a little bit earlier than everyone else, which is pretty cool. But hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll see you guys next time.